From the depths of the abyss comes the next step in tabletop gaming evolution. Ultimate Dungeon Terrain 2.0, today on Dungeon Craft. Welcome to the 100th episode of Dungeon Craft. I'm Professor Dungeon Master, and this channel is about playing the ultimate game of Dungeons & Dragons. Level up your game by subscribing and click the bell icon for future notifications, and you'll be on your way to adventure. So I can't believe it's been 100 episodes, and I just want to start out by thanking everybody for their support and encouragement, all the likes, the shares over the couple of years we've been doing this. It's your involvement and encouragement that helped me get to that number, and I can't wait for the next 100 episodes. I wanted to celebrate this momentous occasion by doing something really special, so today I'm going to reveal... Ultimate Dungeon Terrain 2.0 Ultimate Zone Terrain. And I'm going to have a special announcement as well. UDT2 is lighter, better looking, more efficient, and easier to make. The only tools you're going to need is this utility knife and a gel roller pen. So the UDT concept is this. Instead of cluttering up your entire table with heavy, expensive terrain, you could just use one round, efficient piece of terrain cut from XBS insulation foam. Place it in the center of your table on a Lazy Susan, put your miniatures on it with a few pieces of scenery, all your friends can get to it and move their minis without cluttering up the whole table. It's fast, easy, cheap to make, very durable, light, portable, easy to set up, easy to clean up. And if you have a small apartment or one of those tiny houses, it's easy to store. Elizabeth! You, you, I'm taping. I have limited light and I'm taping dungeon crap. Sorry. Elizabeth. Please, please don't fight. Elizabeth, where's the, what's the website you use to try and buy stuff with the card? That's my son. Right. I'm actually on the third floor of this house in this little nook. Nevertheless, every time I tape this show, it becomes Grand Central Station with all these kids. The original UDT featured a grid that looks like this, and that gave the impression that I run a gridded game. I actually don't. I just found the one-inch sections to be a convenient way to carve up the styrofoam. The zone terrain works like this. You got three ranges, far, short, and near range. It's very index card RPG. Near range is the arena in the center of the board where the main combat is taking place. Short range is just outside. This archer can fire into the center, but he's out of the range of the monster that's in it. Far range is the outer circle of the board. It means the combat is audible, but you can't see it. Either it's too dark or there's something blocking your way. Although this floor pattern has a bit of a grid, I don't use gridded combat. On your turn for movement, you can either move two ranges or you can move one range and attack. Let me show you some setups so you can see the versatility. This UDT represents an entire dungeon. The center is the room where the characters are fighting with these goblins. The second ring represents adjoining rooms where more goblins lurk behind these doors. Or, it could be a castle. The outside ring is the outer wall. The inner ring is the hallways of the castle. The throne room is the center where they're going to face off against Macbeth. I just ran this scenario last night. Here's Victor Frankenstein's cottage. The inner circle is the laboratory. The second ring is the edge of the cottage itself. The outside ring represents the area outside the house, so you can hear the combat occurring inside, but you can't actually interfere. This is similar to how stage plays do it. Here's a shot of the Hail Center stage sent to us by Dungeon Craft viewer Peter Green. The performance occurs in the round, without walls, similar to a D&D &D table. It's worth noting that this is the set to a tale of two cities, and you can't get more epic than that. Surely, if D&D &D players can imagine dragons, they can imagine walls. It also eliminates the need for a fancy gaming table with a sunken surface. You can use this on any table and take it off and eat pizza a moment later. So how do I make it? Well, I'll tell you in a second. Before that, the special announcement. People have been asking me for some time about donating to this channel via Patreon. I finally have a Patreon page allowing you to sponsor the content that you see here. Patreon's gonna allow me to improve the quality of these videos in terms of resolution, audio, and lighting, taking Dungeon Craft to the next level. But most importantly is what you get. There are three tiers. The base level is the library. For a mere pittance, just $2 a month, you get access to my written work, encounter tables, charts, character sheets, and shots of the interior of my notebook, and other scribblings. The second tier is the study. You get all that, plus a monthly Q&A, early access to videos, often extended cuts of them, and polls that'll determine our content moving forward. The third tier is Secrets Man Was Not Meant to Know. 
This will include behind the scenes videos, interviews with my players, exclusive videos that are more esoteric like what was it like to write for TSR and the most important book every Dungeon Master needs to read and it's not the Dungeon Master's Guide or another system. And what a lot of people have been asking for, demonstrations of play. So if you want to see what my table is like and how I run combat without rolling for initiative, I will show you. So thanks in advance for supporting me, and if you can't donate right now, you can help this channel out by sharing the video. YouTube's algorithm really favors larger channels and corporate channels, so by sharing the video, you're really helping the channel grow. Thanks so much. And now I'll show you how to make Ultimate Dungeon Terrain 2.0. So first, you want to go online and check your local Home Depot. You're going to search for half-inch thick Owens Corning XPS foam insulation. A four foot by eight foot sheet of this stuff retails for just $14.90. You can see here it's not in stock at my local store, but it is in stock in another store just nine miles away. Now you can always do it by mail, but I recommend going to the store because I got mine for half price and this is how. When they ship it, they're going to send it with a bunch of other stuff on a pallet and oftentimes there's damage to the first few uh, sheets of this stuff. Mine was missing a corner and I took it to the cashier and I said it's damaged so she gave it to me for half price which was seven dollars and forty five cents. So chances are there's a broken sheet near you and you only need one for pretty much a lifetime supply of this stuff. Well I'm going to measure out the circle with my Lazy Susan that I got from Ikea for twelve dollars and I'll cut it out with my utility knife. Now, the original UDT video, Mrs. Professor Dungeon Master, showed how to make a Lazy Susan, and we still use it, but it's heavy, so we keep it in the game room, and I use the IKEA one for when I travel. The half-inch thick foam is far easier and faster to cut. I place a bowl in the center and trace it with a pencil. That will be the center arena. I use the protractor to measure out where the mortar lines are going to be. We want the size of our stones to be consistent. Then I draw out the center medallion with my gel pen, a Bic Velocity Gel 1.6 size. You want a pen with a large tip. I lightly draw out the mortar lines with my pencil first in case I make a mistake, but I pretty much just eyeball the stones and gouge them out with my pen. Just press hard, there's no need for a styrofoam cutting tool. As you move away from the center, you're going to find some stones need a slender gap filling stone. That's cool, just stagger the mortar lines and make sure that they don't line up. Again, I use the protractor to make sure the next ring is the same size as the previous ring. Here's Mrs. Professor Dungeon Master with a clever trick. Take a string, tie it around your pencil, hold the string down in the center and use the pencil to trace the outer edge mortar line. So I gridded out the center ring and I'm drawing a flagstone pattern on it. Each one inch square gets broken up into four to six smaller flagstones. The key is to, again, make sure the mortar lines don't line up. I have about four patterns which I switch between, staggering them. Now you might ask why I don't use a pattern roller like the ones you can get at Green Stuff World. I actually have those rollers and they work great on Green Stuff, but they don't make a deep enough impression on XPS foam, so I do it all by hand. You might think it's tedious, but it's really kind of meditative, and you can always watch a ball game or binge watch Dungeon Craft to pass the time. It takes about two hours to do the entire ring, but I think the results are worth it. The outside ring is made of staggered stones. They're one and a half inches wide and three quarters of an inch long. I trim the edge carefully. This time I'm keeping the edge smooth, unlike the rocky sides of the original UDT. This is largely an aesthetic choice. It's up to you. I stamp the entire surface and sides with aluminum foil to give it texture. That center stone had gotten chewed up by the protractor tip, so I filled it in with green stuff. And don't forget to stamp the sides as well. I mix Mod Podge with black paint to give it a base coat. This will protect the surface from chipping and spills. When it completely dries, I recommend overnight, I cover it with Craft Smart Tan Craft Paint. I add a little water so it doesn't obscure the texture. Once it's dry, again, preferably overnight, but four hours should be okay, I wash it. The wash is made from 10 parts water to one part black paint. I also add a drop of brown and green paint and a drop of dish soap to help it flow in the cracks. All praise to Black Magic Craft for this secret formula. When it's thoroughly dry, I dry brush the outer edge golden brown. The other two rings get dry brushed with that original tan color. As I mentioned in the previous UDT video, tan on gray is what really makes it look like stone. The center gets dry brushed with this color, suede. We're going to wash the outer circle one last time to make it darker, the edge of the torchlight, so to speak. Now, let's make the center really pop. 
I'm going to use three Craft Smart colors, suede, golden brown, and light taupe, and one Americana brand color, Fawn. These are all different shades of tan. I paint all the stone suede to start with a number eight synthetic brush. Then I paint every other stone one of the other colors. I don't press too hard, so the job is imperfect, but I hit every stone. When dry, I'm going to make a special wash, 50% black, 50% Citadel Agrax Earthshade. I know it's expensive, but it's consistent. You can use a drop of brown ink instead. Then I add a splash of water, mix it thoroughly, and do a patch test on a paper towel. It should look gray. Now I cover just the center, tinting the paint and pulling the four colors all together. It's a very subtle change, but it looks awesome. In a couple of hours, I cover it with a thin coat of Elmer's clear glue. This will give the terrain a second layer of protection. Now I've heard of people who live in hotter climates with high humidity having trouble with this glue. If that's the case in your area, you could just skip to the next step. But where I live in the Northeast, it only took the glue an hour to dry and it forms a nice hard shell to protect from chipping. The final step is to spray it with Minwax Clear Satin Polyurethane. This provides a final layer of protection and will give your terrain a slightly damp sheen. I give it two coats, letting it dry an hour between them. And here it is on the table in all its dungeony glory. If you found this video helpful, like, share, and subscribe. Questions or comments, put them below. You'll also find the links to Patreon and Facebook below. Once again, for Dungeon Craft, I am Professor Dungeon Master. Thanks so much for watching these 100 episodes. I'll see you at the table. May all your rolls be 20s.